ready now? Okay. Okay, let's we start uh, with this conference that is very, very basic. Uh, Miguel will continue with this concepts and you will see that we will repeat again and again because this uh, is very important you to know about these lectures because this is uh, what you will see in the lab. This is the, the basis of other lectures and so on. Then, as I say you, a microscope is built with uh, different lengths, but uh, not single lengths. We will derive the, the theory of microscope using thin lengths, using single lengths, but uh, in, in, in real uh, world, the microscope objective is a complex sex of lengths, but the, the theory of a, of a single lens apply for this. You only uh, need to know some basic concepts, lens maker equation, image formation with different lengths, and then you can apply this to the microscope objective. And also we will have a lecture about microscope objective tomorrow, and about resolution. But to, under, to understand what is inside a microscope, we need to know this uh, complete theory. We need to know about the properties of light and how the light interact with uh, matter. This will answer some of the questions you gave before. Also about refraction and reflection, refractive lengths, and finally about image formation. Let's we start with very, very simple uh, figure about the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. We know that the electromagnetic spectrum, or the, 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 the human eyes is only able to capture very, very small region of this uh, spectrum here in the, in the visible for 400 till 700 nanometers. Uh, different animals have different vision. But uh, also, we are showing here different scales to compare, to compare and, uh, with the light and also with microscopy. But also, it's very important when we use microscopy, for example, fluorescent microscopy or optical twisted, to know about the absorption of our skin. Uh, for many medical applications using la lasers and light, this is very important because, for example, we have here in this uh, figure, we can see how different components of the skin absorb, for example, water in the UV region of the spectrum, also in the in the infrared, different components, hemoglobin, uh, melanin, photofrin, and so on. And this make that in this region between 700 and 1 micron, we have the optical window for, the, for humans uh, skin. Due to that, normally we use for manipulating cells for uh, depilation, laser depilation, we use 900 nanometers because there is less interaction with the, with the skin and the damage will be decreased. Also, the properties of light, because we will derive also here in my, in my, in my course and also in Miguel's course, uh, about the ray theory, but also about the wave theory. Because as I say you before, in microscopy, mainly in image formation, for deriving very, very uh, simple equation there, we use ray optics. But for the uh, deriving there, the, for example, the point spread function, we need to know about wave optics. 
for image formation, for aberrations, and so on. Due to that, it's very important to know the main, or to remember you, because I know this is very basic, maybe for many people here, but maybe for others, no, and we have to uh, remember this. The, the line is an oscillation, not physical oscillation, it's oscillation of the electric field and magnetic field in space, uh, sinusoidal uh, variation. This uh, wave has amplitude, this is the amplitude of the electric field. Wavelength, the wavelength is the distance between to minimum or to maximum. We also have frequency, this is the inverse of the wavelengths, a speed of light, phase, depending on the, this oscillation, when it's a starting in the space. And also, we have polarization intensity. The, the, for example, the, laser, the helium neon lasers are mainly polarized in some direction. For example, it's very important for uh, polarization microscopy to know about this, this concept. But there is a very, very basic equation that relay these parameters, wavelengths, frequency, and the speed of light, this equation. And also, the, the electric field is related with the intensity through this relation. Our eyes is not, are not able to detect this very, very fast variation, 10 to 14 hertz. Only reacts, and detectors, of course, react to the square of this field. And due to that, we will use mainly the intensity of light as a square of the electric field. But let's we, uh, show you an example that is uh, also very common in many applications, in medical applications, and also in biological applications. You must know uh, about very important parameters and of course, when you look at the paper, this is the, the main parameters reported there. Uh, let's we look at very, very simple laser pointing, okay? With a wavelength, 635 nanometers, with a power, 2 milliwatt. A spot area, this spot area onto the sample. Hey, of course, you can concentrate with the lens, and you will take this spot area. You increase or reduce the power density. But let's we take this uh, small uh, eight, eight millimeter spot. Of course, the speed of light is also necessary uh, here with this area. And uh, the electric constant, the electric constant. And with this, we can calculate, for example, the intensity or the irradiance. Some people say irradiance. Some people say intensity. I say irradiance because intensity is also used uh, take into account for the angle, and irradiance is only when you take into account the, uh, the area. Then may be confusing, but it's a question of uh, definition. The electric field using this and the equation I showed you before, you can, cal can calculate the electric field of the, of the laser. That is very, very, very very high uh, intensity, uh, the spot area, for, uh, for example, and the speed of light that uh, mainly we were used in the last equation for calculating uh, uh, this. OK. Also, uh, let's we speak about the speed of life. In, in vacuum, in air, we know that the speed of life uh, has this quantity that I showed before. But when the light meet a medium, the, the speed uh, is reduced, and the, the light changes the, the wavelengths, not the frequency, the, the wavelengths. And the relation between these two uh, speed of light in the air and the medium is what we call refractive index. And it's, this is very important parameter that we will use in microscopy also. It's very important how we will select the materials for lengths and so on, using this equation, of course. But also, it's very important in, in microscopy to start 
off with the definition of ray optics for defining the uh, image formation, length maker equation, and so on. As I say you, and after that, wave optics. But let's we uh, look at the relation between ray and wave optics. It's only a representation. We can, when we have a wave, when we have a wave, if we look at the points of the, which has the same phase in, in the space and time, we call this the wave from. In this case, we have a plane with wave fronts. This is, for example, for a collimate beam. We have plane wave. But for a point source radiating, we have a spherical wave, and we have a spherical wave fronts as the phase of the same phase. If we re represent this oscillation by this plane and the direction of propagation perpendicular to these planes, we will have a ray, a ray there, and we can represent this wave by also by a ray, by taking into account these this, uh, concepts. Also, we know that the pointing vector where the energy is going is in this direction, perpendicular to the, to the wave fronts. Then, this is only a simplification to better understanding of the theory of the ray optics and wave optics. But also, it's very important light-matter interaction, refraction, and reflection the Snell law, because what we can do for deriving the, the, the length maker equation and what happens for total internal reflection, all the process in microscopy when we go from one media to another media with different refractive index is to use the Snell law. What says the Snell law? Okay. The Snell law, first, the first point is that the law of, re of reflection states that the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection, as we can see here. And the angles are measured respect to this perpendicular plane. This is the angle of incident, and this is the angle uh, of refraction, and here, will be the angle of reflection. This is the first stage of the Snell law. But the second uh, step of the Snell law is that this, the relation, the relation between, between this angle and this angle is through the refractive index of different media, okay? The sinus of the trans transmitted angle times the refractive index of the glass is equal to the sinus of, of the incident angles, angles times the refractive index of the air, of if there is another medium. Then, following this law, you can account for the direction of the propagation of the, of the rays, but this Snell law only take into account the direction, qualitative description. For quantitative description of the amount of light going there, reflected, or whatever you want, is the Fresnel equation. And there are different Fresnel equations, but I will concentrate only in the Fresnel equation for uh, normal in incidence. Because as you increase the, the angle, this is the reflection of light when we take into account normal incidence and the transmittance of the light. As we know, a small piece of a microscope slide, you have normal incidence, 4% uh, of the air glass will be reflected in each surface. But uh, if we can change this proportion, we change the angle. And there is a account for that 
in the Fresnel equation. You can look at this, but for now, with this is enough. Also, refractive lenses and focusing and lens maker equation is very, very important in microscopy. And this is the lens maker equation. Normally, we build a lens using two, two surfaces. And with this two surfaces that has different radius of curvature, and also here account for the for the refractive index medium uh, of the medium used here for the for the lens, and the distance here between the top of this surface. But uh, normally we use a definition uh, called as a length, thin lens, in which this is zero or almost zero. It works very, very, very well for some definition in microscopy and in optics. And then we obtain this equation, which is a very, very good relation, uh, very good approximation uh, between the focal length of the lens, the refractive index, index of the medium, and the radius of curvature of this uh, lens. But we can have different kind of lens depending on the uh, surface we are using there. For example, we can have uh, converging lens, positive lens, in which we can focus the light. But we can also have divergent lens if we use two concave surface or meniscus with a plane and, and concave surface of this kind of meniscus and every kind of length. Uh, keep this in mind because when you build a, an objective, what you use is this, a combination of length. Also for a chromatic and spherical aberration, you use a combination of lengths. Uh, and this is very, very important. Only to keep in mind. But also, I say you that wave optics is very important. Uh, let's, we ask, is the focus really a point? When we focus a light, is it really a point? The equation is no. Why not? OK, because the light has a wavelength. And it's not a, 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 a ray. And we will have diffraction, of course, that is related with the limit of diffraction in microscopy. And this is what we will have in the focal point of the lens. This is the point spread function. We have there some distribution of the intensity. I think Miguel also will be speaking about, about this. Distribution of the intensity there that normally is I read this, OK? I read this, some minimum and maximum. This is the, the I read this, and this is called the point spread function. And uh, of course, we will see in the lab also the importance of this. And in each lecture, we will be remembering this because this is related with the resolution. Of course, if you have a point there, you, you can resolve any component in the cell. But it's not, it's not possible. You have a limit due to the diffraction of light. Then there are uh, also, I will only mention uh, about this. Miguel will derive with equation and uh, very precise. Uh, in microscopy, the main aberration are a chromatic aberration that are related with the, with the fact that different colors have different speed in a medium and different refractive index, okay? 
then they will be focused in different places. The red light will be focused there, and the blue light before. And there we have a distribution of colors. How to correct that? OK, using meniscus, we will see that. But also, we have a spherical aberration that, as I say you, uh, any surface is not the perfect focusing element. And then, in any case, we have aberration. How we can correct this? OK, for example, even using monochromatic light, we have a spherical aberration. This light will be focused in different places. This is what I say about single lens when we started they started using microscopy. It was impossible to have a good image because we have different focusing. The rays coming far away from the center will be focused far away. And the light coming here, in the, they will be in different places. The, there are some techniques for correcting this. For example, correction colors. I will show you. Uh, right now about this. But let's we continue with ray, ray optics. And let's we explain about three important laws for image formation. I will repeat it many times because it's very important. The first law states that any ray that enters parallel, parallel to the axis to the optical axis of the lens for one side, proceeds towards the focal point of the other side. This is the focal point, towards the, the, the focal point. The second law states that any ray that arrives at the lens after passing through the focal point, through the focal point, this is the ray through the focal point, F, the focal distance, will be, comes out parallel to the axis on the other side. This is the ray. And the third law, any ray that pass through the center of the lens will not change its direction. Oh, if you have thin lens, of course change. But as this ray change, but again, they are parallel. And you can consider, as a good approximation, that they are not changed direction. And then you can build the image here depending on where you add the object using these three laws. Very, very simple. Not only the image, also the size of the image and the magnification of the image. And this, that is also co called thin length equation, is very important, and you will test in the lab. With a rule, you will test there. This is the object distance. This is weight. You put the object far away from the lens. You measure there this distance. And the, this is the distance where the image will be created. This is what you need to know. And the focal length of the, of the lens, you know that. If not, you can look there, and well, you measure with the rule, and you substitute here, and you get where the image will be created, which is very important, because there you will put your uh, CCD camera, for example, for imaging. We will do that in the lab. But also the magnification is related with this distance. The magnification is related, is the ratio between these two distances. And also, the height of the objects is related with magnification. But uh, let's, let's we think about, this is what you were asking me. When you look with a single lens very close to the eyes, what you see is this. You see there a ray the image, because the image is between the lens and the focal length. You, 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 have, you, you look at virtual image. Due to that, you, you can see the, the right image. But in, this, in the other case, 
you look at the real image as inverted image in the other case because the image was far away. But let we look at image formation. This is the first law. Parallel beam of light will focus the light in the focal lengths here. This is for the first law. But for the divergent lengths, the parallel beam of light will diverge. And this is also very useful. As I say you, I will repeat this many times. Again, first, two, and third law of uh, image formation. OK? Let's we follow this. There are many, many videos in internet showing this. I encourage you to look at this and check this every day. And then Google practice uh, in the lab all this law. But after we are in complete knowledge of this, we also, of course, as I say you, the Snell law for, for the derivation of this, the Snell law that I showed you before is very important. But what I will do now is to, to add the object in different place, even at the final of this, of this uh, video, I will show you another video, and you will see it's a kind of a video that is, is in internet that you can play there, putting the image in different place. Uh, because when you put the image in this different place, I say you the three rules, OK? But now we will put the object far away, for example, fr from this focal point. We put the object here, the first law, again, right parallel, ray to the focus, OK? Now we apply the second law. The second law say we can use this focus, but as we use this focus before, we can use this focus. Light coming from the object passing through the focus will be parallel, OK? And we have now a point here. We have the tip of the image here. But we can also use the third law that says right coming up will be without any change. And then we can build the image there. And we also account for the size of this image. But we did using the, and it's, of course, real image, but inverted. You can do also using the length maker equation. And you will account uh, for this size of the image and also for the, for the magnification of the image, of course. Let's we add the image in between the focal length and the length. Now, right parallel, right through the focus. OK? First law. Now, the second law. Let's we use this because we had used this before. Then, right coming from the focus, right coming from the focus, will be parallel. OK? Right coming from the focus will be parallel. They are diverging. OK? And the third law, but we don't need the third, but we can use, we can decide here, OK? The third law said, OK? Also diverging. If we continued this line back and we get all together, there we have where the image will be created. But this image, you cannot see. You, you look at this image, and you look at there is an object. It's a virtual image. It's not real image. And it's also amplified image. It's magnified image. This is what also we have in when we use also divergent, uh, divergent lengths. OK? Uh, this is also what happened in our eyes, in our iris, when we have different 
uh, beings coming from the, from the object using this tree law, we can construct, we can build the image in our eyes. Then, this is very, very important concept that we have to keep in mind. And I think that uh, with that, and this video will be uh, all for, uh, let's we look at this. I will explain what he's uh, telling there, but it's also very interesting because he will show here uh, how we can uh, create the image in different places. There are some, some internet, some uh, of this kind of this video that I encourage you to use this every day. And then when we go to the lab during this day, you will be able to understand what uh, is happening there. Okay. This is what happened with the person having a correction in our eyes. Okay? If the light is focusing before, before the retina, we add a divergent lens there. And the opposite, when we have another kind of a correction there, if the light is focusing there after our retina, we add a converging lens. But now, uh, now he's explaining here uh, what I say before, what I say before, the important or the basic concepts of, uh, of refraction and uh, image formation using lens. And now we will start with very, very nice, very nice uh, application on what I say uh, before, okay? Using converging and divergent lens here. He's explaining here what happening to the light, and very nice comparison with a, a group of uh, musicians, military musicians, when they meet an obstacle. This is what happening to the light when the light reach this uh, medium with high refractive index. And look at this to understand, even using wavefronts, the, the part of this band coming uh, ahead, they will be the first slowing down the velocity. Then they will be here slowing down the velocity, but this will be going more faster. Then what happened to the wavefront? The wavefront changed. Then due to that, we have a refraction there in this direction. This is playing very well what happened in uh, in a medium with high refractive index. And now let's we look at this very interesting application about what I said before, about the, the three laws. Look at this, for example. The object at 2F, we will do that in the lab. We will, su we will see that when the object is played twice the focal length of the lens, we will have an image exactly twice the focal length of the lens with the same size. By the way, we will have very nice image of the face of Albert Einstein. And we will, we will look there, and you will play with this, and you will measure with the rule. You will see when the image will be very clear. He's explaining now about the first law, light parallel, light through the focus. OK. Light through the focus, light parallel. And we have the tip of the image. And the third law only, only will confirm that this is the tip of the image. And as he said, we have an inverted and an image without any magnification. If you use the lens maker equation, and you calculate, you will see that you take this distance, you put in the equation, you take the focal distance, and you will see that the image will be without any magnification exactly at 2F, OK? But what happens is we put the image in between the, length, the focal length and the length. OK, the first ray, first ray coming parallel 
go through the focus. The second ray coming from the focus goes parallel. And we don't need the third ray, okay? Okay, but the third ray doesn't coincide also. Then we have, again, diverging, the continuation back here, and we have a virtual and also magnified image of the object there. This is what we uh, have when we have a lens very close to the eyes, very close to the eye, and we look at, at, at the book. We can see the image not inverted. This is what I show in the book there, single lens. And this is very interesting. He, see what happened. When you move there, the image gets virtual, and then back, you create the image. This is a confirmation of what he, uh, we, we said uh, before. And now, okay, he will show his uh, divergent lengths. His divergent lengths, again, uh, parallel beam of light. Normally, we use convergent lengths, but also uh, it's possible to use divergent lengths. It's, it's good to know about uh, this when we use divergent lengths. Right parallel, right divergent, through the focus, again. The second ray, again, through the center, no any deviation here. We construct here from the focus, parallel beam of ray. And we have this ray. And here, no deviation if the, if the ray is passing through the center. Then we have an image here. We have reduced image and virtual. This is what happened. See what? How change the size of the image when we move there, okay? Uh, do you have time, Miguel? Please, save me. Uh, it's 11, it's 1238. Is? 1238. Okay, we have uh, till? We, we went on eight minutes over already. Okay, eight minutes. Maybe for question. <laughs> I am almost reaching the okay. final of the lecture. Okay, now, uh, Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Let's we <laughs> let's we take.